Hello everyone, my name is Laurel Hammond and I direct the, uh, the Crochet Circle here at the library. Um, we are so sad that we can't have our meetings in person this month, but um, it's all about being safe, <laughs> making sure that we don't spread any coronavirus around. Um, so in the meantime, we're gonna have a little uh, meeting here on Facebook Live. <laughs> so I've been talking to the, the members of the crochet group on text and we've been uh, talking about uh, doing newborn baby hats and booties. Um, to donate to a hospital for Christmas. And so I got a couple of patterns. I have a pattern for a, a baby cap and little baby booties. And that's what I've been working on lately. So I'm gonna show you, this is a, a half double crochet stitch. I started over here and I've just been going back and forth, up and down, half double crochet, except for down here at the end where there's three little single crochets. And so that's what kind of makes, gives it this nice, uh, nice shape here. When it's done, I'll have to go up the side and then, ooh, gonna, and then uh, close it up here at the top and that'll create the hat. But what we're gonna do right now is actually the baby booties. These are for premature babies, although you can make them in any size. Just change the size of your hook that you're working with and the number of stitches. But it makes a little baby booty about that big, little teeny tiny thing. <laughs> um, and this is pretty easy. It's just single crochet and a, and a bit of double crochet up on the top. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Let me get my yarn here. Okay, so to start a project, of course, you always have to cast onto your hook. So make that little slip knot there. Um, this pattern, it calls for a size F hook, which is very, very small. Unfortunately, I stitch really tight, so I actually have to bump up a couple sizes in my hook so that it, uh, it won't be quite so teeny tiny. Okay, so to begin with, sorry, I have the wrong pattern out. <laughs> okay, so this booty starts from the bottom and goes up. So the chain will be the, the length of the actual, the actual shoe. So we're supposed to chain 23. It's 10. <laughs> 20. 23. That gives us our nice little base chain here. Then we go back and do single crochet all the way across. Now when you're turning, you always allow one, one extra little hook uh, loop there to be your turning chain. So when you go back and go into the chain, you always go into the second one from the hook if you're doing single crochet. It's more if you're doing one of the, the taller stitches. But you go through, you yarn over, pull through a loop, which you see I have two loops on the hook there yarn over again and pull it through both of those loops and that creates a single crochet stitch. And then you just go across and keep doing that until you get to the end. I'm kind of fumbly with my yarn. I don't hold it correctly, but it works. I hope you are all doing well at home. Um, my family's been having a lot of fun during all this quarantine. Uh, we've been just rearranging furniture in the house and doing little projects and things. It's been a lot of fun. We get to spend a lot more time together. But we would also love to see our relatives who live far away. So hopefully we'll get to see them again soon. In the meantime, it's wearing masks and washing hands. <laughs> Doing everything we can to keep ourselves and everybody else safe. So this is a whole, 
This is row two. Oh no, sorry, this is row one. <laughs> row two will be the same thing, going all the way across again. Okay, so I got to the end there. So that's my row one of single crochet stitches. It's still kind of curly, but it flattens out as you get, as you add on more rows. So in order to turn, I have to make that one little extra turning chain. And then I go around and you can see in the top of the stitch, I don't know how well that'll show up in the picture, but um, the top of the stitch makes kind of a little teardrop shape. You make these two little loops here. So when you're going in, you wanna push your, your hook through underneath both of those loops. And that's how you go into this into the single crochet stitch from the row previous. And then you just do the same thing. Now there's some effects you can get um, by using only one or, or the other of those loops. Um, it creates a ribbing effect, which actually we use in the hat. Let me show you that real quick. The hat over here, I was going back and forth in rows, but you only use the back loop, the loop that's, that's on the, the opposite side from you. And so it makes this nice little ribbing effect. It's nice and stretchy. So for the hat, you use that. For the booties, we're just doing straight, both, uh, both loops. And so you go all the way across. I'll never copy the way I hold this yarn. <laughs> there are YouTube videos of really good crocheters. Copy the way they hold it. <laughs> You'll get, a little, get it done a lot faster. <laughs> but this is just how I do. I have not yet taken the time to correct my, my form. <laughs> this yarn is just acrylic um, baby yarn. I got it at Walmart, but you can get, uh, uh, there's lots of different varieties of baby soft yarns. Um, Acrylic is good because it's easy to wash. It washes really well. It doesn't require a lot of special treatment. Um, we wanna make, especially for little premature babies who are gonna be in the hospital for a bit, it, it's good to have something nice and soft and easy to clean. Oops. I was talking and I goofed up my stitch there, but I fixed it. <laughs> Okay, so that was row two. There's three more rows of just back and forth. Rows three, four, and five. We continue that way. Um, of course, we have all the holidays to look forward to this coming up in November and December. Um, but a, a library-related thing that I'm looking forward to next week Brandon Sanderson has a new, new book coming out, um, the latest in the Stormlight Archive series called Rhythm of War. My husband and I are super excited for this. We've had it ordered since January and we're waiting for it to come. <laughs> um, if you're not familiar with his work, oh my gosh, get familiar with it. It's really good. <laughs> it's epic fantasy, which is not, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's really awesome. Um, and he writes, he writes lots of different books and, uh, let me see, we started with um, Elantris and then Mistborn, of course, and then that just ballooned from there, so. <laughs> um, can't really pick a favorite, oh my gosh, that would be really hard. I can never pick a favorite book. When somebody asks you what your favorite book is, I immediately forget every book I ever read. <laughs> it's really hard to pick, but um, there's lots of books that I like, and Brandis Anderson's books are all, always a really good bet. Um, yeah, I was, uh, became familiar with his work when uh, I used to work at the Provo Library a number of years ago, and 
one time they uh, allowed all of us who work there, as, as the clerks and pages and everything, to go to the Utah Library Association conference, which they were holding in Provo that year. And so we went, and we most of us, we'd never been to one of these things before, so we had no idea what we were doing. So we were just looking around and checking out the different panels and things that were going on. And I looked at the schedule, and I saw a panel entitled Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians. And I thought, that sounds hilarious. I need to find out what that is. <laughs> And it was Brandon Sanderson talking about his latest book, which I had never heard of him before, but was very intrigued and uh, tried out Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians, which is hilarious, um, but then decided to check out his uh, um, adult fiction and uh, got into Elantris and then and this one and then from then on. And we've been big fans ever since. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> one of my favorite authors. I also like uh, Jonathan Stroud, who does a series called Lockwood and Company, which is hilarious and awesome and scary. <laughs> that one's more young adult, uh, but it's really good. My daughter just finished reading them, and she really enjoyed them. And uh, whatever he has coming out, I, th I think he has some sort of a historical fiction series coming out sometime next year, maybe. He's working on it right now. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Something about a highwayman. <laughs> um, but it sounded really good. So we'll see. <laughs> and do, 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 do. I am on row four right now, too, if you're keeping track. <laughs> have to go one more over, and then we start adding on the uh, the ankle part of the of this little baby booty. Which that'll be a different stitch, so I'll show you how that works when we get there. Do, 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 do. I hope you can hear me. I'm trying to speak over my mask, but I'm hoping it's not sounding all muffled. Guess we'll wait and see on that. <laughs> uh -huh. When coronavirus stops ruling our lives and we're able to go back to Crochet Circle, Crochet Circle meets twice a month. It, it would usually be the uh, second Tuesday, no, yeah second Tuesday and fourth Wednesday of each month. Because um, of the holidays, we bumped them up a little bit last month. And uh, and then of course, when, with Thanksgiving and Christmas, we were only gonna have one meeting a month anyway, but then our schedule just got derailed. So um, hopefully we'll be able to meet in, in December. And if not, then, then we'll pick up again in January. If all goes well. <laughs> so wear your masks. <laughs> This is my row five. Almost there at the end. So when I get to the end of this, I will not do a turning chain and you will see why in just a second. Do, do, do. Okay, coming to the end of row five. Okay, so instead of doing a turning chain, I'm just gonna go right around, go back in to the chain, I, to the stitch I just finished, and I'm gonna do something called slip stitch. Now, which this is, it's a stitch that has no height whatsoever. So that's why I don't need the, the turning chain. So for a slip stitch, you push the, the hook through the stitch, yarn over, and then pull it through completely, everything, everything that was on your hook. And so it just makes like this little, it, it looks like a stitch, but it's just kind of stuck on the side there because nothing was added on top. So you slip through, slip stitch all the way. And I'm supposed to do that six times. So that was two, three, four, five and six and you'll see why in just a second see now I'm here a little farther into the, the booty and I'll show you on this booty over here that I have that's not quite done so you go back here and that's where you start adding on the the ankle part that's going to be taller 
So now what I need is I need to get up to the height that I need for, for my double crochets. So I'll go up here, three of them. And now I start doing double crochet in the stitch that I started. So double crochet, what you do is you yarn over first and then push the hook through. Then when you yarn over and pull up, it looks like you have three little loops on your, on your hook. Yarn over again, pull through two. Yarn over again, pull through two. And that is a double crochet. And you'll do that. Oops, missed my loops there. There we go. You should have 12 double crochets all the way across. Not to double check. <laughs> it's very important to always count your stitches. Otherwise, you'll end up with a a project that is different sizes in different places, and that's, we don't want that. <laughs> Basically, you can count back from the end there, and you should have five single crochet stitches left undone at the end there. So I just gonna make two more here and that'll do it. Okay. So then you turn around, do your turning chains, chains, because double crochet is, is a bit taller, so you do three. And then again, you double crochet all the way across. Almost at the end there. And there we go. If you want to make it any taller, you can just go back and repeat the row again. But I'm going to go ahead and end it there so we can see how the, bo the little booty comes together. So what I'm going to do now is called fastening off. So I need to get myself a nice long tail of yarn. Cut that off there. To fasten off, what you do, yarn over. You should have a, a loop on your, on your hook at all times, of course. So you yarn over and just pull it through that hoop and pull it all the way out and then tighten it. And so that's what you end up with, nice little shape. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold this in half and we're just gonna stitch all the way around the outside. And so what I have for that is a yarn needle. This is a very blunt needle with a very large eye so that you can fit the yarn through it. And it's made specifically for this. So what I'll do is just match up the ends here. It's just whip stitch all the way around. Just sealing it up. Try and keep everything lined up so that the shape is right. Luckily, 
since it's crochet, you have all these nice little holes here, just perfectly lined up for you to, to stitch it all together. Oops. Ooh, there we go. Pulling it too fast sometimes will bunch up the yarn. Now this little end from where we first started, what I like to do is I just kind of like to tuck it in there and then just cover it up as I go. <laughs> Weave it into the bottom as I sew it together. And it just kind of disappears, which is nice. Just about done. And there we go. So now for the end, what I will do, so that this doesn't unravel on me, I'm gonna do what's called weaving in the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda look at these stitches here and just kind of tuck it through the existing stitches. Oops, pulled it too fast again. <laughs> Let it get all tangled up on itself. I don't need it to be quite so long, so I think what I'm gonna do is cut off some of this extra. There we go. Much more manageable piece then. <laughs> So I'm just kind of tucking it, sewing it through some of these existing stitches, all these little loops and things. So you're just kind of weaving it into the structure of your project so that it's kind of holding itself together. There we go. So I'm kind of circling around and going through some of these stitches. And then I'm gonna go back and go the other way but I'm gonna skip a little bit of it so that it's kind of looping back through and not uh, not undoing itself, of course, because I'm kind of going back through the same stitches again. Let's see here. Well, once I've done that through a couple of stitches, that'll be enough to hold it in place. So then I just go in and cut as close as I can and then it just kind of disappears. And there's a completed little baby booty. It's pretty easy. Um, took us like maybe what, 20, 25 minutes to make, not very long. Um, and so yeah, they build it pretty fast and you can make a whole bunch of them. <laughs> so I had this one over here that I hadn't sealed up yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. <laughs> I'll have a little finish one of these matching sets here. But again, yeah, you just fold it in half. This one was with my really tight little stitch with a smaller hook, so it's even smaller. The little creamy booties, you know, they can be any size. And there we go. And again, just whip stitch, loop it on through all the way down. Not hard at all. Crochet is fun because it's something that's not 
totally consuming of your attention. <laughs> I do get distracted when I'm crocheting and just lose my train of thought sometimes, but it's, it's very soothing. It's a very relaxing thing to do. And then you get something, you, you make something out of it. It's awesome. Um, in addition to doing baby booties and hats, uh, there's also blankets that can be made to, to donate to organizations. I know there's always a need for blankets for, um, say, refugees or foster children or things like that. Um, so that's another project idea that could be done, especially now at the holidays. You know, there's always a need. So I encourage you to look around and see what, what kind of projects you can make to help others. It's awesome that this uh, very fun little fun little hobby can be used to to help other people in need. I want to start making hats again sometime. So I've made some goofy hats for my children over the years. I think I'm going to make myself a strange hat. <laughs> That'll be fun. Don't know what to do yet. I'll have to look around and see what kind of patterns I can find. Last year, my kids were being, they're going to play the part of sheep in our church nativity. For the, the or awards party and uh, so I ended up making a sheep hat <laughs> with crochet and it turned out pretty cute. I found a fun a fun pattern that was made with like a uh, bobble stitch and it had little ears coming off of it and everything and that turned out really well. Um, so there's all kinds of things you can do if you if you can imagine it somebody's probably tried to make it and has a pattern for it and or you can just make up the pattern yourself. You never know. <laughs> um, but I hope you enjoyed this little holiday project and um, I hope it inspires you to, to try some new things yourself and uh, there we go. I hope that our live in-person meetings can start up again pretty soon, but if not, then we'll, we'll be here. Um, thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful holiday.